be an album I pick. It's a Steve Vai album. Obviously, as a guitar player, it was very influential for me. Um, and this album in particular is more a sort of band album. It's the first time I heard Devin Townsend. And, um, so, <laughs> this guy is shouting. Anyway, so this this is the stuff I used to practice as like starting guitar player. Um, so, yeah, great stuff. And it's not the typical Vi stuff, so it's more like... I mean, he, I love the other stuff as well, like Fire Garden and stuff like that. But, but that one is more like a, a band album, so... No, That's a great album. Oh. Alright. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> Panic Broadcast. It's an amazing album to me. It's uh, the one I was actually listening to when I was uh, recording Requiem for the Indifferent. And uh, I love the solos on this album, and um, just the songwriting is amazing. Uh, I think, I'm not sure, but I think Peter Witchers is part of it, because uh, on the previous albums he, he came back to the band on this album, and it was great, and then the new album, he's gone again, and, and I don't really like that one, so... I guess he has to do with the fact that it's such a great album, um, and yeah, uh, I just have been listening to the band since they started, and it's great, yeah, awesome. Pantera, probably the album which, uh, which made me a real metalhead. Um, from the moment I heard this one, it was actually the second one I heard. I heard Vulgar Display of Power first, and then I found this one. And um, I guess that one really changed my life. Also, the show I saw from them, it was for the Farbian Driven album. Um, these guys are just badass, great live bands. Also, on, you know, it's just, yeah. There's no words to describe what I have for this album and this band. It's just my all-time favorite metal band is Pantera. And, um, so also the bands I started with, like when I was 16, it was all heavily influenced by uh, Pantera. So Eternal Love. Next one in line is Lamb of God, probably also because I guess they also listen to Pantera and stuff like that because uh, it kind of comes from that kind of direction if I listen to it, um, or in my opinion. And um, yeah, this is an album I've listened to a million times. I'm not too much of a Lamb of God fan like for all their albums, but this one in particular was like really great, I just love the whole vibe of the album, um, yeah, it just has a great production, great guitar riffs, everything about it is, is in my eyes, really awesome, um, so yeah, again, you know, you have to listen to it to, I can explain in a million words what I think about it, but this was heavy influential for me. Dream Theaters, uh, Metropolis Part 2, Scenes from a Memory. Um, this is the album I probably know from start to finish. I can just sing it all the way through. And um, I saw the tour they did for that one as well. And uh, they played the whole album from start to finish. And it was just great to see them do this technical and very difficult kind of music to just perform it live and so brilliantly and um, so obviously Petrucci is also a very big influence for me. Um, I've practiced hours and hours and hours on what he's doing and I'm uh, far from close to what he can do but um, yeah, 
It's just uh, one of these bands. I kind of lost track of them on the last couple of albums, but um, yeah, like the, the let's say that the first albums up until this one is just just great, and uh, obviously it's still great what they do, but it's it's not like I um, I kind of grew out of that progressive scene or something. So, but still. It, Whenever I hear it, it's, it's just great to hear it again. And, uh, to practice some Petrucci skills is always uh, good fun. <laughs> I would call it good fun. So yeah, that one, great one. Arch Enemy, Anthems of Rebellion. Um, also one of these albums which are like full of um, which album was before this one, actually? It wasn't in the racks, but... Um, Wages of Sin? Wages of Sin, yeah. That one is basically... I, I like that one even better than this one. But still, both albums have great riffs as any Arch Enemy album. And, like, everything kind of fits on these albums. It's, um, yeah, as a guitar player, obviously I love it. And um, I think I kind of stole the vibrato of... Uh, Michael Amott, he, if he plays a solo and the way he ends a note or and also bends a note, that's just, uh, he does it with so much power and so, yeah, it's just a great way of uh, playing the notes, the longer notes, and I kind of stole that idea from him, so I, I do the same, and um, so thank you, uh, Michael. Um, yeah. Great stuff. <laughs>